everyone, my name is Maminder and today in this video I will be talking about what is context sensitive health and how you can test it and validate your context sensitive health. So what is context sensitive health? It's a form of a documentation that is used or tied with your product that enables your users to find the relevant piece of information in order to perform that particular task or the workflow within your products. Now, in order to build a context sensitive help, there are two parties that are required in order to have such kind of documentation. So first one is the author. The person who builds this documentation, he's also the one who builds the map files. So if I talk about map files, these are the files that idly hold information related to what topic should open up or what piece of documentation should open up when the people are or when the users are trying to access some particular feature they're also the one who generate the context sensitive help and once the help is generated they also get to test the context sensitive help so that if there are any errors they could repair them or assign the correct map ids to the documentation now the other person that is required in this process the developer, the person who deals with your application, the person who is going to tie this documentation with your application. So he's the one who gets to pick and choose at what feature should what piece of documentation should come up. Now he's also the one who gets the map files from the author. So in order to perform this workflow, these, there is a to and fro communication between both the parties and in order to make a context sensitive help. Now, once you have generated a context sensitive help, at times there are situations wherein the relevant topics don't come up, right? So once you have generated such documentation, just to give you a heads up, so you could also test it and validate this documentation and see how and how effective and whether is it even calling the right topics when accessed from the product. For that, in this process, there is only one person that is required, the author, and he is the one who tests this context sensitive help. And if there are any errors, he could also repair these errors. So there is an inbuilt application or a utility that is provided within Adobe RoboHelp that enables you to perform that particular task. Now let's see and have a quick look. How do you get to build a context sensitive help? And once you have generated a context sensitive help, how you do, how you get to validate that documentation. So I'm just gonna quickly switch to Adobe RoboHelp. Now, this is a project that is already built within Adobe RoboHelp. So if you have the documentation that is already ready, right, in order to build a context sensitive help, all you need to do is just go to the outputs tab. And then down at the bottom, you have the map file, something that resides within this particular folder. So you could just expand it. And down at the bottom, there is a map file that ends with .h extension. So you can just double click on it and it gets you or gives you the information. What all topics are there and what are the map numbers or the IDs that have been assigned to them? So if you are planning to build the context sensitive help, you would see all the documentation. This is the place wherein you need to go. It would show you all the list of topics. You select the topic, you select an auto map and it assigns the ID and the map numbers to it. Now, you would also notice that there are some bookmarks that are included. So, yes, if you would like your users to jump to a specific piece of document, uh, you know, specific place within your documentation, that is also possible. So instead of scrolling down the document, you could simply use bookmarks and enable your users to get to that piece within a less amount of time. Now, also something that I wanted to highlight so you also have the option to, you know, if you would like to add some prefixes to your uh, to your map IDs, you also have an option for that. You could make them uppercases, or also you could define what numbering should be defined, what numbering should be provided to this documentation. Now, after that's done, once you have generated or once you have assigned the map IDs to your topics, all you need to do is you simply need to select the output the layout that you would like to generate right and under this option there is a place wherein you get to pick and choose you have to select 
and ensure that your map file is selected, the one that you built for your project. Simply hit save and generate and the map file will get generated, which is ready to be shared with your developers. Now, like I said, so there would be situations wherein you might encounter or your developer might encounter challenges or the right topics might not be coming up. So how do you test it? For that, there is a utility that is already provided within RoboHelp. So I'll simply go to the toolbox. And if you don't see this option, just simply go to tools. And then there is an option that says toolbox. And then this is the utility that you could leverage. CSH test, context sensitive help test. Simply launch it. There are different kinds of help that you get to generate from RoboHelp. So definitely there would be different ways that are different piece of documentation and different options to test that help. Now, since, you know, web help is something that has been majorly used or, you know, something that is still being used, right? So this is the field that you need to select for the web help in order to test your web help documentation. Or if you have already switched to the responsive output, you could just simply select this, navigate to the location where your actual published output resides. So in my case, it's going to be on my desktop. I'll just select my index.htm file. And then now I need to select my map file. So I have to go to the location where my map file exists. I'm going to select it. And the moment you select it, you would see it would give you the list of all the map IDs or the map numbers that you have assigned to your topics. You select your documentation, you give a click on show help it opens that piece of documentation. So this is how you ensure that whether your context sensitive help is working or not by using this particular utility within RoboHelp. Also, there is one more way that you could test it out. So something for the responsive layouts that you could use right now. There are many more functionalities that we are using within our context sensitive help, like filters, or at times even we would like our help to open in a new window itself or some piece of documentation to open in a new window. So how do you test it out? So for that, what I can do is I'll just go ahead and open my help directly in the browser. So this is my documentation, the one that I generated. Now, in order to enable or in order to ensure that it is a context sensitive help, you need to add a parameter that is RH CSH equals to one. Now, once you punch that in, hit enter, now, the documentation that you are seeing is context sensitive. Now, after that's been done, how do you ensure that a relevant piece of topic comes up? For that, there are different parameters that are available. Definitely, I will be sharing some piece of documentation along with this video so that you could see what all parameters are, are there and how you can test them. So you simply add the ampersand sign and then just specify RH map number. You could also try out the map IDs. In the map number that you have assigned to that topic, hit enter, it opens that relevant topic to you. Now, the other thing that I would like to test is, I would like to see whether my particular document opens up in a new window or not. For that, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna add another app number. Let's say this is a topic that is supposed to open in a new window. And with this, what I can do is, I can just simply add, an, add one more parameter that says, and hit enter. Now, since it says pop-up is blocked. So I'm just going to enable this option and hit enter again. Now you could see this documentation comes up on a new window itself. Now let's try and relaunch this documentation again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different topic this time. And this is the topic that comes up on my screen. Now this is the topic that is enabled with the dynamic content filters. So now you can also test out whether your dynamic content filters are working within the context sensitive help or not. In order to do that, all you need to do is just simply specify your topic, which in my case is gonna be this one. And then there is an additional parameter that you need to add. So it's gonna be filter. You have to select your filter name. 
So it's going to be the group first. I'm going to type in country, say location, and then you specify which filter. So I'm going to select the region and hit enter. The moment I do that, you could see how it tests out and how it shows that, selects that particular filter and gives me the result on my screen. So now there are different ways. There are various ways you can test your context sensitive help before sending it out to the developers and ensure whether your piece of documentation is working correctly or not. If you have any questions, feel free to ask the questions and I will try my best to help you out with the same. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.